Hello and welcome back to Sorted Food. I hope you're ready because today we have an ultimate appliance battle. We are going to challenge our normal home cooks to create a dish with only a kettle, toaster and microwave available. That's for you, Nigel. This is not just about the glory of a win, but we're also asking you to compete for a basic equipment badge. Mike, you get the chance to get a second. Oh, what? He doesn't get two. He can't have two of them. One dish with all the creativity you can from those three appliances, starting now, I'm going to start with say, I don't need these two. I've got my friend here, the Michael Wave. He's sophisticated, he's smart and he's sharp. Right, let's get going. I'm going to start by boiling a kettle. Basic equipment badge. <laughs> the f what a kettle is this? OK, so first thing I'm doing is peeling a squash. Because, Ebers, I am making roasted squash which is glazed in miso and served with a tahini dressing. I'm making an eaten mess, a microwavable eaten mess, which doesn't make sense when you hear it first time around, does it? Not really. Um, it starts with egg whites mixed in with some ice and sugar, put into little balls and then microwaved. So this is an idea we came up with in Can't Be Asked to Cook 2 and it makes no sense until you try it and then it makes all the sense in the world. I'm making kettle poached salmon, eggs royale with a microwave hollandaise sauce. So this is breakfast or brunch if you're stuck in that hostel or self-catered accommodation or dorm and bed sit with limited equipment. Yes. It's going to start with my salmon. I'm going to oil a bowl, then toss some salmon in the oil and some dill. A bit of seasoning. One. Two, three, four. That feels crazy. I've got sesame seeds and pumpkin seeds on the crumb tray going in and hopefully they'll warm through nicely, release some of those amazing oils and fats and flavor as my squash cooks. So that's on the highest number it goes. So four, four minutes. It will take a couple of goes. I don't think I've ever seen anyone cook something in the crumb tray of a toaster. I'm not sure how they're gonna cook We'll find out. Uh, right, four balls onto a lined plate. And these four balls, well, let's see what happens. I think they're going to combine into one big ball. Now to move on to the fruity part of Mato Mess. I'm doing poached pear uh, and blackberries as well, with some nice spices, with some brandy and some pork. Baz, why <laughs> have you cut it into quarters and then peeled it? Because it's not, it's not a natural instinct of mine to peel something. I would do everything I can to avoid it. But in this recipe, it's a must. I thought when we set this challenge of basic equipment badge, we were talking about how creatively you can use a toaster, a kettle and a microwave. I wasn't expecting you to suffer on the use of a peeler. Shut up! <laughs> yeah. I can leave that to marinate in the marinade for a little while whilst I crack on with my hollandaise. Which way round? This way round. That was close, Evers, wasn't it? That was close. So, Jay, how do you make a classic hollandaise? Let's go back to basics before we do this microwave version. Egg yolks, lemon juice, a bit of mustard, whatever else you're going to put in it, whisk it up, and then melted clarified butter whilst the bowl is over a pan of hot water. And da 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 da. Put a vinegar reduction in there. That'd be lovely. But just da 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 until you start to get some lacy bits. Take it off the heat. Figures of eight, and then do it on a tea towel so it keeps the bowl warm but not cooking anymore and it doesn't move. So in this essence, the mustard is helping to emulsify the lemon juice you're using as a quick cheat as opposed to perhaps a vinegar reduction. And then a whole butter measuring jug. Basic equipment badge, judge where the door is before you jam it in. You'll notice that I'm trying to complete this entire challenge using only a knife, a board, a microplane, and the type of things that you'd find in maybe like an Airbnb kitchen or a dorm. 
to try and keep as, you know, restrictive as possible so I can really show off the creativity. So, gonna make a glaze. Brown sugar, miso paste, mirin, rice vinegar. Oh, my squash has popped. As you can see, it's not done at all. Let's stick it on for another four minutes. So finishing this off with some black pepper and then into the microwave to heat up, melt, become all lovely. Wow. That's meringue. Quiet. Don't show it to anyone from France, Italy or Switzerland because it's none of those three, but it is sweet, crispy, cooked egg white. It looks like meringue. And if you get it right, you should have a little bit of a kind of a chewy center as well. Oh, right. Next lot, back in two minutes. You're coming up to about 10 minutes. Next meringue is done. Oh, yeah! I, you can't, I can't get bored of that. <laughs> Pear, sugar, cloves and star anise, port, and sherry. Brandy. Brandy, why is it sherry in my head? And then this goes in the microwave for six minutes. Now, in the spirit of understanding the creativity and usefulness of your basic equipment, why is that easier and better? Firstly, just using one bowl, one machine, rather than a hob and a big pan. Also, I barely need any liquid to cook that and poach it. Usually, you'd be poaching the whole pair in a tub of the stuff. Poach. Definitely microwaved. Oh, oh, yeah. Similar result. Butter is melting in the microwave. That'll take about two minutes. I can then start to whisk that into our egg yolks. In the meantime, my salmon has marinated in my marinade, and I'm going to poach it in boiling water. Where's the bloody button? I'm going to poach it. Did you not use the keep it warm button? I'm going to poach it in the kettle that just boiled, submerge it in there, and then put my bowl on top. Now that's going to do two things, Ebers. Number one is it's going to keep the water warm in here. It's also going to warm up my egg yolk hollandaise mixture. So that becomes your bain-marie. Exactly. Have you made a mess in there? You uh, butter get someone in to clean that up. <laughs> right. <laughs> my egg yolks nicely whisked together. I can start to dribble in my butter nice and slowly. I want it to emulsify with the mustard and the egg yolks. Let's make a tahini based dressing. Again, no bowl. I'm going to use a glass. So we want a couple of tablespoons of tahini in here. Gonna zest in or grate in my garlic. Oh my goodness, this is smelling amazing. Where, if at all, are the hot spots in the microwave? On the edges, which is why you should never place something in the center because it just does that. Whereas if you put it on the edges, it goes all the way around, right? Almost. <laughs> You're right with the edges but microwaves cook by bouncing the microwaves off of just about every edge. So if something stays still, i.e. the middle, then it's likely to get attacked in an uneven way. Whereas if things move around the edge, you're absolutely right, it moves through those hot and cold spots. So with a plate which has got a completely level surface, there is a chance that the very middle will cook quicker than the edges. Gonna add a pinch of salt. Oh, I should have done this first. Oh, how do you use this? Okay, so I'm gonna let this down with a little bit of water. Um, while that's happening, let's slice a lime because lime juice is also going to go in. And while that does its thing, now for some whipped cream in a jam jar. I love this hack because I always have the remnants of jam at the bottom of a jam jar that I go, it's not quite enough there for to put on toast, not quite enough to put in the cake put some double cream in that jam jar, shake it to an inch of its life, and you've got some sweet and jammy cream. So in theory, as long as there's enough air in the jam jar as I shake it, that air can get into the cream. Wow, that hair is floppy. Yeah, it's going to get floppy as time goes by. Floppy hair. I don't know why my head is moving so much, but it's just, that's just natural. This... <laughs> This is an awesome little hack. I also like doing it with the, the last little bit of mustard in the jar where you make a vinaigrette oh, in it. So you yeah. put in your oil and your vinegar, you shake and it gets the last of the mustard. This is getting the last of the jam. You can do it with marinades, um, with the last of pretty much anything in a jar. Make it in the jar, waste nothing. It's incredible, look at that. <laughs> oh my goodness. This recipe is genius. 
I'm nearly done, believe it or not. You've had about 15 minutes. Ah, oh, banging. Salmon poaching. Hollandaise, done. Ebbers, let's talk about poaching eggs. We have done countless videos on how to poach the perfect eggs. And none of your fancy chefy methods have ever used a microwave. It's a little bit of water. A little bit of vinegar. Pop an egg into each cup. And then what we're gonna do, which is a nice little extra step, we're actually gonna use a toothpick to burst the yolks. Why? So we're not gonna, so it cooks basically at the same time. It's gonna cook evenly rather than waiting for it to, whites to set up. Yep, so I think the logic is if you don't give them a little bit of brick, they tend to kind of explode. Pop them into a microwave, 30 seconds at a time until the white is set. So on a standard sort of like 800 watt microwave, it should be about three goes, minute and a half. In the meantime, I'm gonna take my basic knife, <laughs> slice up some muffins, a little bit longer. It's like the scene off of what is a grommet. <laughs> Assorted club tea towel, the other thing I always go on holiday with. <laughs> okay, let's get all of that glaze. And now it's going back into the microwave um, to hopefully finish off um, the cooking of the squash. Look, they've actually browned a little bit. I mean, in two very direct lines from where the toaster lines are. But <laughs> hey, look, there's some toasting there. And look, the great thing about seeds are, Ebbers, that when you mix them up, look at that. A lovely, even toasting. Crappy white bread into the toaster. Lettuce. I've got some coriander here that I will chop up. Pairs out, nuts in. OK, nuts in. These in just three minutes. We always talk about eating seasonally, but of course you can cheat with other appliances in your home. Those blackberries are not in season at the moment, but I picked them from the allotment when they were in season and they've oh, been in my freezer ever since. Ebbers! Then you get the flavours that you love all year round. I didn't realise these were from your allotment. This brings a whole new meaning to the dish. Let's have a look in here. Moment of truth on the salmon. That's flaky AF, look at that. Flaky as fish. We want the lettuce. Oh, that's nice. Like, let's get some. All of those elements you've got there could also be done in advance. You don't have to do it moments before you serve it. Right, that's me done. Spaff out. Do you want me to stop the clock? Yes, yeah, stop the clock. I think that will taste great. I'm not sure it looks great, but I think it will taste great. Let's put in the sexies and see if we agree. Well, they don't look like ready meals that have just come out of a microwave. Ready meals. Ready oh, meals. Ready oh. meals. And yet they were all ready in about 20 minutes, give or take a minute either side. That kind of custardy yolk, not quite runny, but I think with all of these microwave uses, sometimes it takes a few goes to get it right, but then it's right every single time. The salmon, however, is absolutely bang on. Bang on. And the hollandaise is delicious. In terms of basic control of basic appliances, I feel like you got lucky on the muffin because you just put it down. You didn't even check to see what timing was on the front. It popped up when it was done. It was just on the cusp. Whereas the second dish, you wanted some of that deliberate char. So I'm gonna make sure we get some of that. That is really tasty and a good combination of ingredients. It is super fiery and raw garlic in terms of that sauce, could have held back maybe quite a large clove of garlic, taste as you go, because that's a lot of raw garlic that I can feel on my breath. It's very Moorish, 
because it's got all the things you want. You've got the sweetness, you've got the char, you've got the seeds for texture, you've got the lettuce, which has nothing done to it other than that dressing. It's really nice. Really nice. And then dessert. Ooh. Mm. Oh, oh no, you've hit a sweet spot. It's so different to the idea of an eaten mess because of those spices. So the star anise and the clove, even though they were just in that liquid for a little while in the microwave, really comes through. And the nuts completely transform. Um, they are toasted and roasted like you'd get out of an oven. It is the texture you want from an eaten mess. That crunch remains, the sweet, sugary, powdery kind of crunch, and then with all those other flavours. Plus your nuts are great. Nice and round. The idea of cooking fish using a kettle and residual heat and using that same residual heat to do the hollandaise, I think is super smart. You do get a bag. Gosh. You used a toaster to make toast, but then you also went on to use the same process for squash. And I think the cleverest bit was the use of the crumb tray, which I would never ever have thought about. So I know you've already got one, but you can have another. Oh, yeah! You're up to intermediate. Yeah. An intermediate basic equipment badge. <laughs> Amazing. Whereas here, poaching, baking inverted commas of meringue, also super smart, then you can also have the badge. Yay! Well done, lads. For me, in third place, would be the slightly overcooked eggs. In first place is the eaten mess. To get meringue and cream and poached fruit in that time is genius. Well, we know what Ebbers thinks, and whilst some of us may agree, the majority of us disagree. Uh, what do you think? Comment down below, let us know which of these dishes would have taken your win today. And if you'd like to see us do more appliance-based battles, give the video a like, and we'll get on it. On it. On it. I can leave that to marinade for a little while, or marinate. Marinate in the marinade. Yes. Verb in the noun. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Said the bishop to the... <laughs>